Bill has brought in a senior scientist from Polaroid, Ted McClelland, to put this theory to the test. Was it possible for Rex Heflin to snap off three photos in 20 seconds using a Polaroid 101? Ted has brought an authentic Polaroid 101 camera. It is the exact same model Rex Heflin used in his everyday work and to take the infamous photos. The film very simply goes in to the back of the camera, close it up and everything is light tight, raise the viewfinder and close it up, hit the shutter button and close it up, pull the frames out and, and I'll demonstrate that. So you're not waiting for the film to actually process inside the back of the camera. You just take the whole pack right out as soon as you're done with the photo? No, you take the fr frame out as soon as you snap the shutter. Okay. Well, acid test. Ready? <laughs> Ready. Go! Two, you're doing good. Seventeen seconds. Very good. But with one debunking point crossed off the list, there are still others that plague the Heflin evidence. Several claims have been made that the shots are too focused, suggesting a double exposure. A double exposure happens when two photos are taken on the same frame of film. If this was a hoax, Heflin could have taken one photo out of his window of the sky and then taken a second photo of a hubcap or similar object on the same film, making it appear as if the two images are one. So Ted, another really big issue in this whole Heflin controversy is this. Look at this shot. This looks like it's in focus. That 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 looks like it's in focus. And that looks like it's in focus. And this is in focus. These vaguely look like they're in focus. And this is in focus. That looks like it's in focus. That looks like it's in focus. And these vaguely look like they're in focus. And this is in focus. That looks like it's 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 in focus. And these vaguely look like they're in focus, and this is in focus, the rearview mirror. So one of the issues is that these are somehow double exposures or hoax shots. Depending on the camera settings and the film stock, objects close to the lens or far in the distance can appear out of focus. Heflin's ability to capture a crisp foreground and background led many to question the validity of the photos. Using this camera, having it set on infinity with 3000 ASA speed film, you would be in focus from three feet to infinity. Okay, so what you're saying is that that camera can keep all of these disparate objects, this, 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 and the line of the road going off into infinity here, in focus at the same time. Correct. Another point that plagued James McDonald was seen in Heflin's fourth and final photo. Heflin's last image appears to show a smoke ring that lingers after the craft flies away. The first three photos show what seems to be clear skies, but the fourth, supposedly taken only two minutes after the first three, shows clouds in the sky. So looking at these three photos taken from inside the car, in fact, you can't see any clouds in these photos, whether they're or not. Gets out of the car, takes this, now suddenly clouds appear in the photo. So the question is, where are the clouds? This camera, the automatic exposure, is probably tricked by the darkness within the van and, and setting the exposure closer to that. The outside photo, the last one, is nothing to interfere with the auto exposure, and it's picking up exactly what it sees. So let me get this straight. Here, it's getting darkness from inside the truck. Correct. Overexposes this. Correct. Therefore, totally white sky against a totally black background. But here, he's outside. So the automatic exposure only takes what it sees from the light that's coming in the lens. Nothing interferes with it. It takes exactly what it sees, i.e. the clouds. Correct. That mystery solved.
While some of the major debunking points have been dismissed, the harshest one of all is that the object itself is a fake. Project Blue Book labeled the photos as a hoax, calculating that the object was only nine inches in diameter, 12 feet off the ground, and about 15 to 20 feet in the distance. There is no hoax that I saw pulling up negatives of this, magnifying this as best I could. I saw no signs of a hoax. So no strings, no piano wire, nothing like that. Yet the strongest proof that this is a true UFO may lie in calculations by James McDonald himself. 